Taxes, taxes, taxes. It seems like they are everywhere. How much do you know about taxes in Canada? Did you know that if Canadians had to pay all the taxes up front in 2020, they had to pay all income they make until May? Only after the May 19, we start to work for ourselves. In other words, let's say if we're working five days a week, we actually work two days for the government for free. Then we have to use the after-tax money to pay for our mortgage, groceries, and retirement savings. Wouldn't it make sense to get a better understanding of the Canadian tax system so you can make better decisions? And that's exactly what today's video is about. I will explain how the Canadian tax system works, more precisely how tax bracket works. So make sure to stay until the end because I will share some actionable steps on how you can lower or defer your taxes. Hey, welcome back. This is Thomas, here to help Canadians to make better choices on retirement, wealth, and insurance. My goal is to make sure you can take one or two ideas home and start making smarter financial decisions today. If this is something that you are interested in, click that little button now so you will never miss any of my videos. Let's jump into it. So taxes, taxes, taxes. Who invented taxes in Canada anyway? Taxes as we know it today exist in various forms throughout civilization. Kings, queens, chiefs, people in authority collect taxes from the people they root. People pay the tax bill with something they produce or gather, such as grain, fish, or animals, and the tax system we know today was pretty much evolved from four stages. The first stage was before Canada became a nation, the government collect taxes usually through the custom duties and sent them to the two mother countries. England and France. Then, following the Confederation in 1867, the two layers of government, both federal and provincial governments, wants to collect money for their own use. The federal government need money building railways, roads, bridges, and harbors, and the provincial need money for education, health, and welfare. Then, in 1914, as Canada joined World War I, our government need more money, so they increase the taxes. At first, the federal government announced that only the big corporation need to pay a portion of their earnings as tax. But in 1917, more money was needed, so now the Canadian government introduced the Income Tax War Act, where everyone who made income needs to give a portion out. At that time, the government said this was only temporary. But of course, after the war ended in 1918, the government still need to pay for war-related expenses such as veterans' pension and debt interest. So by 1948, the income tax was no longer considered temporary, and the Income War Tax Act was replaced with the Income Tax Act, and we've been paying tax since then. Now, why do we want to know this? I just want to bring in the fact that the government has the power to change and increase the tax bills, especially now. Do you know how much money our Canadian government spent on the recovery plan? I understand desperate times require desperate measures, but that also means our government will going to collect their money back in the very near future, so it's important you understand the basic and be smart about it. Okay, let's start from the top. It's important to know that there are different types of tax system in the world. For example, regressive tax, proportional tax, and the progressive tax. For now, Let's focus on the progressive tax because that's the system we have in Canada. Progressive tax or graduated tax means that the low income earners are taxed at a lower percentage than high income earners. The more money that you make, the more taxes that you have to pay. And that has to do with our tax brackets. For tax brackets, there are two vocabs that you need to know, marginal tax rate and the average tax rate. In simple words, marginal tax rate is a tax rate that your next dollar income will going to be taxed at. Versus the average tax rate is how much you need to pay in the entire income. Why is this important to you? You see, if you understand where your income falls within the tax brackets, it helps you understand how and when you can claim certain deductions and credits. In other words, knowing it makes it easier for you to deal with taxes in Canada. So again, the tax bracket your income falls into depends on the amount of income that you make. For example, we have Peter here. For simple math purpose, I will round the numbers and use only the federal tax brackets. Peter makes $60,000 a year, so the first $48,000 will be taxed at 15%, which is 7200 
then the next 12,000 will be taxed at a higher tax rate at 20.5%, which is 2460, a total of $9,660, which is 16% of his total income. So his marginal tax bracket is at 20.5%, but his average tax bracket is at 16%. Again, keep in mind that I'm not an accountant. Examples like these are just for sharing purpose and the actual number might change. For any tax problem, please contact your accountants. Anyway, understand what tax bracket you're currently in can also help you understand changes in your income tax. For example, I do hear a lot of people might say, oh, I don't want to create more income because the government will tax me more. It's true that if you start a side hustle or you have extra income, that will push you into the next marginal tax bracket. But because the total amount of tax that you pay is based on your average tax rate, not your marginal tax rate. So in the end, say you make $60,000, you will keep more after-tax money compared to the one who's making $50,000. And there are two bosses in Canada who always want a piece of your money. One is called the federal and the other one is called the provincial. They both have their own tax bracket to collect their money. I personally think it's too much number to memorize. So I usually say, if you're making $40,000 to $50,000, roughly you're paying 20% of tax in total. And if you're making 80 to 100K, then you are paying around 25% of tax. If you want to find out how much tax that you're paying, I suggest just Google a good tax calculator. Type your current income and you will know what's your marginal and the average tax rate will be. By now, you probably know more about the Canadian tax system than most. Now going into the fun part, what can you do with this information? Well, tax evasion is a serious criminal activity, but by law, you can do a tax deduction. Taxes that can be lowered, such as income tax and investment tax, can be lowered using the right amount of tools to invest. There are two ways to legally pay fewer taxes, tax deduction and tax credits. To use them, you need to know what kind of investment tools that give you a tax deduction. For example, an RSP or pension contribution. I have a whole video series on RSP, make sure to check it out. Other tools may give you tax credits, for example, dividends, donation, or something called the Small Business Venture Capital Tax Credit. I will share more about this in the future. Neither way, knowing how to control your income and utilizing tools that give you tax deduction or tax credits not only will help you lowering your tax bills, but also increase your chances to get extra benefits from the government. Now you know that Canada has a progressive tax system, meaning the more that you earn, the more taxes that you have to pay. You also understand that parts of your income fall into different tax brackets. And most importantly, you know now that there are ways to legally pay less in taxes. Remember, it's not that hard to understand how taxes work. Just take the first step. If you want to dive deeper into the topics of saving, protecting, and growing your money, then I'd like to invite you to my 30-minute online training. There should be a link below. Click on it, and I will see you in there.